What I like people to do is imagine. Imagine what a school would look like if it was outside, experiential, and in context all the time. You wouldn't have a classroom the way it would be today. You would be in the natural world. And that's what we're trying to do, be outside and involved in the human and natural world as much as we can. It's hard to imagine what it could be like, but imagine again students together walking along a log and studying mosses. They're feeling it, touching it, sensing it. They're asking questions about the mosses. Then they go off and jump off the log and land near a giant cedar tree. Then there's an elder there talking to the children about the story of the ancient cedar. And then from there, the students again can ask a, a multitude of questions. How old was the tree? What did the tree see? How are the moss and tree connected? There's all sorts of questions that come out that, that leads to the learning outcomes that they need to do. What fascinates me is that if we move curriculum from K through seven, and we actually break down so that it becomes the whole, it becomes ecological, then we're not separating subject areas. We can actually incorporate all the themes, projects and activities that we do into a broader sense of learning. So everything happens at once. So the language, art skills, the vocabulary that comes around there, the science, the social studies, the math, all comes from the place in which we learn. It's based on place-based education, imaginative education, it's inquiry method or project-based learning, inclusion, which is different than other forms of inclusion because we're looking at strengths instead of weaknesses. We're looking at working with people's talents and moving them forward and then helping the challenges come forward. And then environmental education. And so those five strands are all tied together and that helps us to, to focus on the practices or the principles that we have intermixed with those. Each one of our pedagogical practices are not unique. They're being researched and done in different places throughout the world. However, by joining them all together and taking the walls away from a school and having students learn experientially, hands-on and in context, means that this is a very unique project around the world. We didn't start the school just because we thought something needed to be done differently in learning. We started the school because we thought that we needed to expand and enhance learning through the community. So we asked Kate C. and Kwatman First Nation community members and teachers, parents, information on what we can do and move forward with. So the ideas that we're establishing with the principles and the goals are a community-based theme. It has us as the motivator and the innovators, but it also has a community base behind it. Once people can imagine what learning would be like if we, they were involved or participating in the environmental school project, as soon as they can imagine it, they're all in it. They want it. As this project starts to grow, I think it'll be exciting to see it ripple outwards and start to affect other places and, and other learning environments so that there's a lot more experiential, hands-on and in-context learning happening everywhere and not just with our project. <laughs>